In this video, we're going to look at setting up something called a Python environment. And although this is strictly speaking optional, it will make your life so much easier if you do it. So I really strongly recommend that you do follow me and set up a Python environment and that you always work in a Python environment. So to do this, firstly, you need to be able to type that Python command that will run the latest version of Python. So if I type Python 3 hyphen hyphen version, I get back the version of Python that I installed. You need to be able to do this before you can set up a Python environment. Once you've done that, type the command that you use to run the version of Python you've installed and then type hyphen m space vnv and then a space and type vnv again. This is going to set up a Python environment. So the hyphen m is actually saying load this thing called a module which has the name vnv and this is actually a directory name that's where we're going to put the Python environment related stuff. So if I run this, it may take a few minutes to set up. Okay, that was actually pretty quick. And if I check what's happened, if I list the content of this directory using ls or using whatever command you use on your system, I can see that there is now a vmv directory in there. Let's take a look at what's in the vmv directory. So I type ls or whatever command you use and vmv, which is the folder that I put it in. And we can see in there, there is a bin subdirectory. If I type ls vmv slash bin, I can see what's in the bin subdirectory. It used to be the case on Windows, I think it still is, that here you would have to use the the other slash, the one that slopes the other way. I think PowerShell will accept this forward slash even on Windows, but of course you can type whatever you want as long as you can figure out how to list the contents of directories like this. And we can see in here, there are various, these are actually programs, the scripts, small programs called Activate. And to activate the Python environment, we need to use the right one for our platform. Now, since I'm using PowerShell, I can use this activate.ps1. So I need to type the name of that program to run it from the current directory. Let's try typing vmv slash bin. This may also be in a scripts folder. I think it used to be, but now it seems to be in a, in a bin folder, at least on my platform. And then, activate, and in fact, PowerShell is not case sensitive. If I type part of the file name and hit tab, it actually auto completes it for me. Then I'm gonna to have to put in dot P, hit tab again, and that's, that's what I want. Notice this dot at the beginning, that may not appear on Windows. On Linux and Mac, generally, if you wanna run a program, you have to type a dot which stands for the current directory and then the directory names rel relative to that. that. That may not be necessary on Windows, I don't know, but either way, you just need to run this activate.ps1 program. And PowerShell does need to be running. This is a PowerShell script, right? So if you're using PowerShell, this is the one you need to run. If you're using something else, then maybe you need to run one of these others. So let's try this. I run this and we can see that PowerShell is still running and we're running a Python virtual environment, which is what VM stands for, virtual environment. Now, what's the good of this? Well, here it is. If I type Python now, remember previously that was giving me the wrong version of Python on my system, but now 
it, it actually starts the right version of Python. This has actually started up a Python shell. I'm just going to quit that by typing quit and some round brackets. If I type Python hyphen hyphen version, then we can see this is running the right version of Python. So one thing that this does for you is it means you can definitely type just Python by itself and it will run the right version. And the other thing which is perhaps more important is that now if we install extra Python code, which we call packages, and we'll look at those later on, they will install in the right place. Whereas otherwise, it, if you don't use a virtual environment you, or you don't set one up and you install a Python package, it may well install for a different version of Python that's hanging around on your system and it won't work for the version that you're using. So this Python virtual environment tremendously simplifies the business of working with Python. And that's why I strongly, strongly recommend it. So I'm going to assume for the rest of the course that you have a console that you like using and you know basically how to navigate it, maybe with LS and CD or other commands. And I'll assume you've got PowerShell running. If you haven't, that's okay as long as you know what you're doing. And I'll assume that you have an active Python virtual environment running because this will simplify things a lot. This is a free video from my course, Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners. I'm releasing the first couple of chapters of this course completely for free on YouTube to get you started with Python. I plan to upload new videos here to YouTube every Monday and every Thursday for at least a couple of months. If you're interested in the complete course, which teaches you Python from scratch and eventually progresses to things like creating graphical user interfaces and using neural networks, principal component analysis, cluster analysis, all that stuff, and much more besides. Then you can find a link in the description or just go to this URL on the screen right here. If you finish the whole course, you'll be able to write all kinds of general purpose programs in Python and use Python to do machine learning and artificial intelligence as well. Thank you for watching. Until next time, happy coding.